Uh, in a move reflecting volatile and changing times in college athletics, North Carolina state legislatures, uh, legislators, excuse me, advanced a bill Tuesday that would require the state's two largest public universities to play each other annually in football and basketball and play three top public system schools regularly. Under the measure, which cleared the House committee uh, with no debate, the football and men's and women's basketball teams at UNC and NC State would be required to play each other at least once annually, starting with the 2025-26 school year. The bill also would direct the Wolfpack and Tar Heels to play East Carolina, Appalachian State, or Charlotte at least once every year in those sports. North Carolina and NC State have deep rivalries going back over 100 years, reinforced through their ACC membership that ensures they play each other routinely. I, I mean, to me, to me, this just very much seemed like foreshadowing. The, I, for all the talk that we've had for a while, and there has been plenty of like, there's so much influence on the board of governors from the NC State side of things that NC State might be able to really staple itself to North Carolina and get on out of there into a Power 2 conference as well. Um, this makes me think that everybody's looking around like we know what the inevitable is. And I would also go back to what Andrew Carter, who is a reporter in Raleigh, said on the channel not that long ago right here, and that was that, hey, I, I kind of have my doubts that that would actually happen. He did not seem very bullish on that actually being something – when push came to shove, that would happen, which stands to reason logically. If you are the governing body that's overseeing these schools and you've got a chance for one of these schools to be a part of like the thing that matters most in college athletics and make that much more money for the state and be better for enrollment and all those things. And the option is like, you got to either like the answer would be no from the SEC or whoever it would be. The answer would be no or you can just let North Carolina go. I mean, you would be kind of doing a disservice to the state and the students and all that if you didn't just let them go. So that is, you know, anytime there's a discussion about that with Board of Regents, Board of Governors, whatever, that's that's really what I default to because I feel like at the end of the day, when push comes to shove, that's probably what would happen because you would be kind of going against what would seem to be the actual mission here of making things better for all the students in the state if if you didn't do that if you didn't allow that to happen so that to me makes a whole lot of sense and this seems to be kind of an acquiescing to that like just looking like hey this is probably what's going to happen like we see the writing on the wall here we know that florida state and clemson are way in this thing and it, they're coming like the toothpaste is out of the tube. Essentially. That's the best analogy I could give you on the ACC. The toothpaste is out of the tube. And I don't know if you've ever tried to put toothpaste back into a tube. You can't really do it. So there's no going back at this point. And they're looking around like, well, I mean, UNC, once that happens, UNC will have to be gone. We are the most coveted prize in realignment, not named Notre Dame. Now, as far as like the rest of this bill, to, like that's the big picture to me. The big picture is obviously that's what it feels like is happening. On a like in a vacuum, if I just saw this story in a vacuum without the context of conference realignment behind it, I would say this is great. This is awesome. There's like I'm from the state of Kansas. Okay. There's been a lot of discussion forever about like, oh, well, you know, KU and K State should play Wichita State every single year in basketball which I would, I would love, or at least, you know, some kind of rotation, play them regularly in basketball. And it's starting to happen more now, but for a while it did not. And, you know, a lot of that was like you know, when I was growing up, when I was a kid, K-State was going through the worst stretch of basketball and program history. It didn't serve them to go play Wichita State. But I think like more of this actually could be a very good thing for those states and developing rivalries and just making it more fun for everybody involved. I know it's not as fun for the big boy, so you don't, if you're North Carolina, you don't want to go play. How many overtimes did they play with App State? Was that last year or two years ago that they played App State? And a game that went into a ton of overtimes and Mac Brown said, like, we're never doing that again. Yeah, they're not going to want to do that, but it's that doesn't mean it's not for the greater good of the state and the sport and everything that we love about college athletics. I mentioned it earlier, but, like, losing Bedlam is one of the dumbest, dumbest, worst casualties possible that you could have in college football. Uh it's it's atrocious that we're doing that. And, you know, we took away Texas and Texas A&M. 
Kansas and Missouri have started playing a little bit now, but that's also very stupid that we lost that throughout the course of realignment. We're losing much more than we're gaining. So if we can take one of these back with North Carolina and NC State and get them to play and bring in some of the other smaller schools within the state, I think that's all excellent. I think that's great. I think we should definitely be doing that. But here, obviously, you have to kind of read the undertones and see what does this really mean? Is this a foreshadowing that people with power and influence in the state of North Carolina either don't think this is going to happen for NC State or they're at least just like, well, let's let's kind of hedge our bets. All right. We we think there's a chance we want NC State to be able to leave with North Carolina. But just in case, let's go ahead and make sure that they'll at least play each other. Let's give them some kind of I mean, it's a very it's a consolation prize. It's a very weak one at that in the grand scheme of things. But it would at least be something. It would be some form of a consolation prize there. And I know there's been speculation, too, about, look, UCLA has to pay the Cal tax, the Calimony, as John Wilner brilliantly coined it. They've got to pay that. Maybe something like that would happen with North Carolina and NC State. This can be a part of it, too. It gives NC State a game. You know, they'll be able to sell tickets to that thing. I mean, you know that, especially rivalry, I'm sure, would amp up a notch or two if and when North Carolina actually were to leave. Uh, just to finish this article, uh, UNC and NC State have deep rivalries going back over 100 years, reinforced through their ACC conference membership that ensures they play each other routinely. Uh, but with the ACC's evolution, uncertain amid conference alignment and schools uh, chasing more revenues, the potential for UNC and NC State joining different conferences is not so far-fetched. Uh, the ACC is facing uncertainty about its long-term future as it continues to face a growing financial gap behind the Big Ten and Southeastern Conference. The bill still must clear two House committees before a floor vote. Willis said bill supporters have talked Okay, so this this is actually, let me draw your attention to this so you don't tune out of the reading. I understand that you can tune it out. The bill still must clear two House committees before a floor vote. Uh, Willis said bill supporters have talked to the schools involved and have received no negative feedback so far. There is that. No negative feedback, even from UNC folks apparently here. Uh, he said he's also found support from officials in the state Senate, which would also have to approve such a mandate. Any final measure would go to Democratic Governor Roy Cooper, a UNC graduate. Got to include that, you know, anytime we're talking about important people in all of this, definitely need to know where they went to school. Absolutely need to know that. So this is not passed. This is not mandated yet. There are still some hurdles to clear, but it does seem like this has some real momentum. And the last time that this happened, it was something that went through. And that was when we were talking about the board of governor is like forcing anybody who is going to leave to basically unveil all their plan, telegraph all their plans early. And you've got to submit, you've got to send it through the board. We have to approve it. The financial plan, all of those things that wound up making its way through when it started just like this. So it would seem very on brand and in line with what's been happening in the state of North Carolina for this to also happen. Okay. 